right, so now let's talk about inverses of secant and cosecant. That's not quite as simple. So let's start with an example. If I've got um, the inverse cosecant of negative square root of 2, what this says is what arc, what arc or what is the arc whose cosecant is negative square root of 2. So I could rewrite that in a function notation. Um, So there's some cosecant, or there's some arc whose cosecant is negative square root of 2. Alright, but you know that the cosecant is the, the same thing as 1 over the sine. And I'm just going to put that over 1. So I've replaced cosecant with 1 over sine. And all I did is take the cosecant negative square root of 2 and put that over 1. And now I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. Basically I'm going to flip both sides over. So this becomes the sine of x over 1. And this becomes 1 over negative square root of 2. And let me move, take that and move up here. And just rewrite it without the 1 underneath. And so this says um, the sine of some arc is negative uh, 1 over the square root of 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back into my inverse notation. So I can say the inverse sine, I really like the negative on the top, of negative 1 over the square root of 2 is x. So what I did through this whole process, in fact they just kind of ended up here on the same lines, that wasn't intentional. So what I ended up doing is saying, see how I started out with the cosecant like this? Cose the inverse cosecant of negative square root of 2 went through that whole process and ended up saying that's equivalent to the inverse sine of negative 1 over the square root of 2. That's the formula. So let's go ahead and finish this one out a bit. Um, no, we won't finish this one out. We'll just keep, keep with the formula here. So the formula says the, uh, the cosecant of x is equal, I'm sorry, the inverse cosecant of x is equal to the inverse cosine or inverse sine of 1 over x. So if you know the formula and if you're given the cosecant, inverse cosecant of x, you can simply substitute the inverse sine, but then take this value right, right here and the reciprocal of that. Likewise, if you have the secant of x, that is equal to, I'm sorry, the inverse secant, that's equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over x. So that's kind of a little derivation of how, do you, how you get to that. And before I do an example, I'm just going to put a little note here that cotangent is different. Okay, And it's different due to the restricted domains. See, I can do this because my restricted domain, if 
my secant matches my cosine and my, my cosecant matches my sine. My restricted domain of my cotangent does not match my restricted domain of my tangent. Okay, let's do an example. And you can see how this works. Alright, so I've got the inverse secant of 1. Okay, so this says there are, there's some uh, arc whose secant is 1. So let's apply the formula, which means I can turn this into an inverse cosine of 1 over 1. And of course, 1 over 1 is 1, so we can simplify that. Oops, that's x. So you just look on your circle. It's cosine, restricted domains, quadrant 1 and 2, and where is the cosine 1? And so that's at 0. So the inverse secant of 1 is 0. Let's do another example. Here's the inverse cosecant. Of 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. We want to figure that one out. So let's change this into an inverse sine. And i got to take the reciprocal of that. Well, to take the reciprocal, you could just say 1 over times the square root of 3 over 3. You could think of that as 1 over 1. Let me just do this work here. 1 over 1 times the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So that's 3 over 2 times the square root of 3. And we've got to rationalize that. So that becomes 3 times the square root of 3 over 2 times 3. So this 3 cancels with that 3. So this is the square root of 3 over 2. Boy, does that look familiar. Square root of 3 over 2. And so looking at your circle, where is the sine the square root of 3 over 2? And you'll get that that arc is pi over 3. Alright, this is the end of this video.